and seven years ago, a young girl was sitting in the principal's office of Forest Park Elementary School. This young girl was sweating, shaking with nerves, and halfway considered jumping out of the nearest window. That young girl was me at 12 years old. I had been invited to present the Gettysburg Address, which was originally delivered by Abraham Lincoln to the United States in front of my entire elementary school. You may not know this, but my biggest nightmare at that time of my life was being seen and heard in front of my peers. Here's why. I was morbidly obese. And whenever someone took a look at me or paid attention to what I was saying, the first thing they would do was shame me or bully me for my weight. I've come a long way since I was 12 years old. Lisa introduced me and shared that now I'm an international speaker. I've spoken to hundreds of audiences from Fortune 500 company employees to entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs and authors and speakers. Today, I would love to share with you three steps to powering up your presentations. Who's excited to get started with me and dive right in? All right, the key to powerful public speaking is represented by the three letters in the word C, S-E-E. -E. What does the S stand for? Well, S stands for signature speech. We've heard a number of presentations today, some of them of which are the signature speeches of our presenters. Some of them, as we've heard from Iskra, are impromptu off the cuff types of presentations. I honor you wherever you are today. What I can say is when it comes to a signature speech, this is a prepared 60 minute presentation that you wish to become known for as a leader in your field. Here's what I see a lot of speakers doing, is they're becoming kind of the Baskin Robbins of speaking. Baskin Robbins, if you're not familiar from the United States, is the 31 flavors of ice cream. You go into Baskin Robbins and you can choose vanilla. Maybe you can choose chocolate. Are you feeling like pistachio today? But in the corner, there's cookie dough. And don't forget behind you, there's caramel swirl. If you fall into the trap as a speaker of customizing a presentation, every time you're invited to speak, you will become known for none of those presentations. When you think of a leader and a speaker who has impacted your life, what do you notice about that speaker? I like to think of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Now during the course of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s life, he presented probably hundreds, if not thousands of speeches. However, when that name came up, did you hear in your mind, I have a dream. That is the power of a signature speech. That is what Dr. Martin Luther King is known for. What do you want to become known for? And by the way, I'm a big believer in the joys of the holiday, and giving gifts. So keep listening if you just joined us because I have a special gift for you at the end of this 10 minute presentation. The second letter in C, E stands for experience. Your job as a speaker is not to share your personal story or share a, an incidence, a problem or a struggle you went through. Your job is to create an experience for your audience. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, well, Jen, how do I create an experience? There's just so much to think about. I like to look at it in two elements when I work with my coaching clients. And if I'm honest, this is my favorite thing to work with my coaching clients on. The first element when it comes to creating an experience is starting with the end in mind. Here's how people typically write a presentation. And you might be doing the same thing yourself. You say, okay, here's my topic. Here are the stories, examples, or points that I want to make. I'm going to start from the beginning, write my intro, go to my points, and then finish up. When you work with me, typically people have great content. I'm not massaging your content. You already are an expert in your field. 
what we work on is the organization of your presentation so that when your audience leaves at the end of your presentation, they know what to do next. And you leave them on an exceptional high emotion that motivates them to take action. You do that by starting with the ending in mind, knowing what you want your audience to leave with, and then crafting the experience leading up to that ending. It is really fun and is an entirely different way to look at organization when it comes to your presentations. The second element that helps you create a unique one-of-a-kind experience for your audience is the emotion. We've heard from some speakers today the importance of emotion both for you as a speaker, but also for your audience. You're there to serve your audience. I remember one time I was presenting a topic I had presented probably to a dozen audiences. I looked up into the front row of my audience and tears were falling down the face of a woman sitting in the front row. I was shocked, I was like, what do I do? because I'd never had anyone cry during that particular presentation. As a speaker, it's not our job to control what our audience experiences with us. And your job is to make sure that they don't leave you feeling sad and depressed, but you know that you're crafting an experience that might take them through the highs and lows of your topic. I work with transformational entrepreneurs Sometimes that's around spirituality. Sometimes that's around organization or leadership. Typically, there are highs and lows within these areas of life. Curate the emotion that, and allow your audience to experience that emotion alongside you. And make sure that you leave them feeling happier than they came to you. That is how you create an amazing experience. Take a deep breath with me. The last E of C stands for engagement. If you watch the replay of this event, you will notice in the course of the last eight minutes, I have invited you to engage with me several times. If you missed it, just go back and watch after the event ends, you'll find them. Your audience wants to take action with you and or your content. Now, depending on whether you're on a virtual stage like I am today with you, or in person in the room and experiencing the audience in a live event, there are different ways you can encourage and invite your audience to engage with you. That is where the fun is, my friends. So if you have shared a lot of content, and I do this myself, a lot of speakers feel that the value they add is within their content. That's not necessarily true. It's in how your audience feels about what you shared with them. So if you are spending a lot of time up in the head level with your audience and their head is full of ideas, practices and tools, encourage and invite them to drop down into their heart and give them that next step. Remember when I shared with you earlier that I like to give gifts and I have a special gift for you. My gift for you is a way to take action on everything I just described with you. Clarifying your signature speech, getting clear on how to create that experience for your audience and consistently and confidently delivering an engaging event with your audience. All of that can be resourced and accessed through my one page download, the signature speech template. I'm gonna pop that link in the comments below this video. So make sure you grab that and let me know what stands out for you. Can you see how using the three letters in the word C can make you a more powerful professional speaker? I work with coaches all over the world who want to take a stage and share their message. It's not necessarily what you say, but how you say it. I love to support my coaching clients on getting onto those stages. I am dedicated to the proposition that every man and woman are created equal. I also believe there is a stage for you, even if you're not sure where to start with that. 
My name is Jen Espinosa Goswami, and I will see you on stage. Back to you, Lisa.